History has been made in Tokyo tonight. Fencer Chung Ka Long has claimed Hong Kong's first gold medal at these Olympic Games and only the second gold in the city's history. The Post's Paul Riding was in Tokyo to catch all the action. Paul, it's been an amazing day for Hong Kong, an amazing day for Chung. You are in Tokyo and you have witnessed history today. Yeah, delighted. Um, it's the type of result that we had no business to expect. Um, we had a disappointing couple of days with perhaps people who we more who we expected a bit more that they would reach the podium. So by today, uh, we here were, were starting to temper our expectations a little. But as the day progressed, Chong was looking so good, so relaxed. We just I dared myself to think, is there a small chance he could go all the way here? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, very, very pleased to witness history and, and what a fabulous day for, for Hong Kong. For Chung, of course, but also for Hong Kong. Of course, it's uh, only a second gold medal in, our, in the city's history, um, a fourth medal outright. Um, so yeah, it's a, it's a piece of history that we've witnessed. A few lucky people inside this arena have witnessed today. And I'm sure everyone across, across Hong Kong and Hong Kong fans were all watching as well. How did it all play out for you? You were there. Yeah, uh, he started okay. His first game against arguably his easiest opponent was the one that he was probably least impressive in. He won, that's fine. You know, the early, the early stage is just about feeling your way into it. But he got better and better. In the quarterfinals, he totally dismantled uh, the world number one, the Italian. Uh, and from that point on, he, he just, he looked two foot taller. He, he really grew in stature, looked very, very confident. Um, and, and yeah, I just started to think maybe, maybe when he won, when he won his semi-final match and we knew that he was, uh, uh he, he had a medal, a guaranteed medal, uh, which is a very rare thing for Hong Kong, as I've said, um, I didn't dare to think it could get better than that. After all, he was playing the defending Olympic champion, a guy he'd played twice, he'd beaten him twice. You know, he had, we had no right to expect him to, to go all the way uh, and win this. But yeah, phenomenal performance from him today. He was unbelievable. You, got the, you spoke to him after he won his gold. What did he have to say? Yeah, very briefly, uh, he's just getting given his medal now and he was dragged away before he had a chance to speak too much he hasn't spoken to anyone all day uh, i think it's part of the new look mindset he's adapted with his with his coaching team he's all business now and he looked that way uh he his coach told us that he he had advised him that he wasn't to speak to any media until it was over um so we finally snatched a question with him i asked him he uh, he looked calm all day i said did you feel as relaxed and confident as you looked uh and we were flabbergasted. He said, no, I was very nervous all day today. Um, every time my opponents were getting better and better and I was really nervous that this was as far as I was gonna go. The, <laughs> the Hong Kong media who were standing around were gasped and then laughing, but he was serious. You know, he never took anything for granted today. He was all business mm. and, and it showed. And what about, what was the atmosphere like at the fencing arena? Yeah, uh, a lot of these, a lot of the nations competing here they've brought big teams of of uh, fences and in the last i was here a couple of days ago and the difference between then and today it just feels like there's a lot more vocal support from um, the rest of the team because obviously there's no spectators allowed in so what you had today was the coaching staff and the rest of the teams really really trying to make it din um, it was notable notably more uh, audible than it than it was a couple of days ago uh, and yeah it was a lovely atmosphere it was a really nice atmosphere um I was, I didn't know what to do with myself from the semi-finals on. I was very nervous. I wasn't the only one. Speaking to another few people in the Hong Kong press pack, everyone was feeling the same. Um, but yeah, great atmosphere, mm. great result. What Fact, do you fantastic day. Mm. Uh, what do you think this gold medal means for Hong Kong? What do you think this means for the sport of fencing in Hong Kong going into the future? Look, they've always been there and thereabouts in fencing. There's a rich tradition of good fences in this in in Hong Kong. Um, I think the difference was they came into this not really expected to, to go all the way. Um, we, we, we talked about Vivian as being a, a possible medal chance, but too, too often people have bigged up Chung Ka Long. He's no longer even Hong Kong number one. Uh, that would be Ryan Choi, who went out earlier today. So 
expectations really tempered. Um, but yeah, this is a massive, massive, uh, this is a massive win for, for the sport in the city. We, we grabbed a word with, with uh, the Hong Kong team coach afterwards. And he said he knew he knew that John Carlong was good enough to win it one day. He, he acknowledged that there'd been some near misses over the over the years. Um, but he said, from the first day I started working with John Carlong, I knew that he was an Olympic champion one day. He, he, he said, I thought it would be in Paris in three years, but he's he's delivered early, which is good. It's it's huge for, for the city of Hong Kong. Obviously, it's been a rough couple of years, um, but this is something that everybody can really get together and enjoy. Fabulous day for the city. It's an absolutely amazing day. Uh, Paul, you have a long night ahead of you, no doubt. I'll let you go. Thank you very much Thank for the you. chat. Cheers.